Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Luke. Thank you for joining us today on Notice Integrations. We're going to be discussing uh, the single elimination for Invader League Season 6 um, and what I expect for top tier lists out of the four factions. This video might go a little long, so bear with me. Um, I will be covering quite a bit. Um, it's like five or six lists in total and I think we will see and do well in the playoffs here as we get into it. Uh, just real quick, I'd like to do a shout out to LJ and his team and all the judges that did uh, you know another great job in Ron Robin and organizing and putting on this free event for us. Uh, it's really great that we get to do this and we appreciate all the hard work. We know it takes a lot uh, and you have to deal with all us. Uh, scrubs out there asking questions and things so appreciate it and your patience with us and thanks for all the work that you do so let's get into it uh, as we know uh, this is the sixth season of Invader League it's been you know each year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, this year we had I think it was actually I don't even know what the total number was it was like 192 or 216 maybe um, but yeah quite a big tournament and now we're getting into single eliminations with 80 people this season um, which is pretty crazy um, so yeah it's gonna be quite the stiff competition and uh, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun to see what comes out on top um, so what do I think is currently the best list um, well I hate to break it to you, but I believe it's the 13 activation CIS list. Um, we saw them creeping in there last season, um, but we had, you know, standby castle with um, clones that was still top dog. But now that they got nerfed into the ground, well, I shouldn't say into the ground, but that list is no longer with us. Um, this list kind of just came in and take, took over. Uh, what are the additions to the list? Well, we have the T-Series tactical droid which is, uh, well, it's very cheap. It's only 55 points. Uh, before, you had to take 200-plus point commanders. Um, so the fact that now you can take a 55 or 70 with aggressive tactics now and then build your list around that, it just opens up things for CIS in general. A um, couple things going for CIS, as, as we know. Uh, they always, you know... They never cared about suppression. The droid keyword is very good. Um, sure, you lose the fact that you don't get cover from uh, suppression, but you never lose actions uh, due to being suppressed. The only way you can really lose anything due to suppression is if you panic, which as we know is pretty tough to pull off. I mean, if you're in the courage uh, bubble of your commander, it's two, so you need four suppression without uh, rolling any off. And that's very rare that it's going to happen, especially in this meta. There's not many suppressive um, units out there, so it's it's really not much of a hindrance. Um, followed by, of course, every list that you build with the Separatists, you can pretty much do um, perfect order control. Um, now that the T-Series has an HQ uplink already baked into him, you don't even need to take HQ uplink anymore. So it's very efficient. Um, having perfect order control and not picking out of the bag is extremely good. Um, you know, you, you know exactly when and what you can activate uh, during the round. And then lastly, you know, obviously droids are very efficient. They have huge amounts of raw wounds when they build the list. This list here, that's just basically the 13 act list that everybody knows. It has uh, upwards of 70 raw wounds. And then if you factor in saves, it gets up to like 80 or 90, depending on how you take into account aggressive tactics. So, I mean, that amount of health in the pool, not many lists have enough firepower to just take all that out. There's just too many bodies, um, particularly um, rebels kind of struggle with this because they're the list known as like piercing units with heroes but they don't have as much firepower in those big dice pools to really clear out activations and then lastly as you'll see with this list uh, because they're so cheap they can bid heavily without really losing too much um, as we can see with this list it's a total of 
778, and it has 13 activations. So, you know, you're going to get a battle deck that's very favored for you, um, as we'll see and discuss in a second here, but it's just very tailored to the list and what you want to play objectively and um, with the deployments. Conditions are like, you know, a third thing that is there, but I don't think conditions are too important in the game. I mean, they're still there, but usually not too important. So here's the list breakdown. Um, it's pretty pretty basic. You just take a T-Series with aggressive tactics. You have six battle droids. Uh, the heavy weapon of choice, here I have E5C. This one will be best against troops. Um, if you know you're going to be playing against troops, you take this one in your meta. Uh, you could take the E5S, which is the sniper. It's two points more, but it gives you that versatility versus um, armor and things like that because it does have critical one. So you're going to be throwing more crits with that. So if you know you're going to have you know troops and armor, you might take this one. If you're expecting a lot of armor, though, I recommend you take all rockets. Um, that'll be impact two times six, so that'll be impact twelve you'll have no problem dealing with AATs and things like that. Um, next, you know, we just spam three snipers, pretty simple. They just kind of do their thing, be a little annoyance, a little thorn in your opponent's uh, side. And then we have three staps. So the important thing with staps in this list is that you have 13 activations. You have perfect order control off standing orders, which means you will go last unless your opponent tries to do like a roll off on standing orders so you know if they have 11 activations you have 11 activations and you're going last that means all three of your staps can go after anything else can go on the other uh, side of things so you know you're gonna do three staps you know they shoot pretty good they're uh, six black in total critical two do that three times you're gonna wipe one or two activations usually so pretty good and then when we get down into the battle plans, uh, your objective deck is very favored, like we talked about before. Uh, intercept, Breakthrough, Bombing Run, Payload. These four um, are super good for you, especially Bombing Run. That's probably the bane of the meta right now. Everybody's worried about that, I'd say. Just because with the steps, you can triple move at the end, drop off a bomb wherever you want, and your opponent can't do anything about it. And then on the flip side, you have so many activations that it's going to be tough for them to move their bomb into your zone. I mean, you could do things like tie up and melee, just shoot them with a ton of suppression that they get no actions or drop the bomb or something like that. It's going to be very difficult for your opponent to get their bomb there. Um, the deployment's super favorite as well. Major offensive, long march, advance, and rollout. You know, you want to try and hit your opponent with everything at once so you you know, with these deployments, you can kind of just march forward in a formation and then, boom, everything hits at once. Uh, conditions, like I said, aren't too important, but they are there. Minefield, clear, fortified, and hostile. Particularly, fortified positions is going to be the best for this list just because of giving hard cover all the time to that many wounds is just going to, over time, uh, slow your opponent's um, effectiveness at removing your models. So... You know, giving hard cover to droids with white saves is a lot better than giving uh, clones hard cover with red saves because just the way it works out, you know, if you have the hard cover, like 90 or 70 raw wounds behind that, it's just going to be a lot to chew through. So yeah, that's kind of the list. I do expect this list to win. Um, I don't think many things can really compete with it. There are some things, but with the fact that bombing runs in there and breakthrough other lists are going to have a lot of uh, difficulty trying to beat this on an objective game and I, it is important to note that i think the game is becoming even more objective focused um before we had you know not very many objectives but now i do think it is more objective focused like last season gar was just a standby castle they didn't really care about what objective they played it was just shoot everything off the table. Um, but this season, it's more focused on objectives, which is good to see. I think um, we're moving in the right direction. 
So, uh, there is a second list that I think CIS is going to be running a lot of, and that is, of course, the double AAT. Now, this list I ran back in ladder, um, but that was before T Series Tactical Droid, and they also got repair bots now. So, this list got even better since then. Um, again, this list can bid pretty heavily. This is just a basic setup, and it has a 34 point bid. It's a T Series Tactical Droid. You got two repair bots, B1s, and then four nakeds. Uh, sniper with the relay. And then you also got um, two tanks. I just built them as link targeting ray and high energy shells. Now you could do things like throw in armor piercing if you want to do that cycle flip flop effect, or if you think um, you're going to be seeing enemy armor. But I don't think it's necessary. I think you're more focused on the objective deck and that's why you need the bid and just like the last list it's very favored you have KP which you can literally cover up with a tank uh, so that your opponent can't even get to it you have intercept the transmissions which forces your opponent to come out of hiding and go to the center which then you just blast them off the table with your tanks or you could literally just like block where they could go with your tanks Payload, you typically just don't even play. Um, you just you just play defense and play the points game. Just like Sabotage, you just play defense, play the points game. Uh, make them, you know, make a mistake and put a unit out there and then boom, boom, your tanks double blast them off the table. Uh, same thing for the deployments. These are, you know, the longer ones, the L-shaped, that you can kind of use your range to your advantage. Um, and also deny secret mission. That's kind of important for this list that you don't give secret mission uh, a way into your end zone. And then conditions are pretty much all the same. Uh, nothing really changed there. Again, they don't matter too much. You're focused on objectives and deployments. So yeah, that kind of covers the two lists that I do think will do well for CIS in the single elims. Um, there are things with mall and other stuff, but uh, yeah, I think these are the two top lists that we're gonna see so moving on into we have next up is uh, The Imperials now. I think there's only one list worth talking about with Imperials unfortunately uh, At this time. It's just that their core is just a little too weak um, They care about suppression too much and they don't do enough damage output to really warrant them um, use so, you know, it's just Iden ISF, like normal. Uh, you got Iden fully kitted here. Then you got three shore troopers with the T21, three mortars, and then three ISF with uh, offensive push. You can do some things uh, to try and get a bid because this, you know, list when facing 13X or the double tank list uh, doesn't like to see, you know, bombing run doesn't like to see uh, key positions where they could just cover it up with their tank so you could just like drop a t21 for a bid but um, you're not guaranteed still to even win the bid war so it's kind of tough there and you do lose quite a bit of firepower now you're just down to like two short troopers with the t21 and those could be picked off by you know like a Cassian or something so it's a little risky um, it only has 10 activations too so like facing 13x they're gonna have four activations on you it's pretty tough um, in that sense but I do think that this list has firepower enough to take it on uh, if you could guarantee that you wouldn't see um, bombing run in the third slot this list could probably probably do very good against the 13 act list um, you know this list is just going all in on turn one and two trying to clear as many activations that it can and then just try and snowball from there, which it can do. If, if the player is very good with this list, it could easily you know, take out two or three activations turn one and then just snowball from there. But uh, with, with the um, problem that is bombing run and maybe like breakthrough and like KP versus tanks, like I don't know that this list um, could handle like seven rounds of that and getting lucky that you don't see that in the third slot. So that's kind of the problem with the list. Um, like I said, you could probably bid, but 
that's risky. So anyways, that's the only list that I think uh, Imperials really have. There's probably something out there. I know Ed likes his Palpatine Ion Snows, which I think is just a complete meme. <laughs> I don't think it's actually good, but I hope he pros proves me wrong in uh, the single Elim, so we'll have to see on that. All right, so moving on again, we have uh, Gar, um, the clones. Uh, this list is basically just like a list that you can't kill. Um, it's the Dodge Cancer list. Uh, I think Notorious Scoundrels probably have talked about it, but basically what you do, you have two clone commanders with Vigilance, which lets you store up to four dodges from the round before into the next round. And then you have R2 with C3PO, so you can spam even more dodges. You got three phase twos, the Z6 situational awareness, so you can dodge crits. Um, and then you have one with fives, same deal. And then naked phase one, just spamming tokens. And then, you know, three arcs. Nothing really crazy here. Um, you know, it's a pretty good list. Um, like I said, you have three plus saves as well as dodges that you can spend on anything except high velocity which is where the list kind of drops off. If you play double tanks, they always have a high velocity, so you're not going to be able to spend those dodges. But maybe you get you know, some hiding. You can kind of sneak up in there on the objective, and then you focus down their B1s. That's kind of how you would have to play the list uh, versus double tank. Um, I do think it could win, like I said, just like the last one, if you knew that you weren't going to see bombing run in the third slot. It could win but because of the fact that that could happen and it will happen over the course of like seven games that you have to play to try and win Invader League um, I just don't see it uh, going the distance unfortunately it might make it to top 16 top 8 I'm sure but to take the first place slot probably not um, the firepower is a little lackluster you only have three z6s Fives is like okay. He's not a great attacking unit. The Z6s I like better than fives, uh, but you only have three of them, so it's not a lot of firepower. Arcs are good, but they're not that great versus like 70 raw wounds where you're just p picking off one droid at a time. Excuse me. It's just not going to be enough to chew through all those bodies. So that's that list. Um, there's some other things that you can do with the Republic um, you could take Rex but I think he did get kind of pushed out by the clone commanders they're just so good with direct um, and only 55 points like you can take two of them for the price of Rex so I just think that they're gonna be replacing him completely also with Rex you can really only get up to 10 activations now and um, yeah it's just it's too tough um, Versus 13 acts again, like if you only have 10 activations, they're going to be doing four things after you. Maybe you could do the snowball type effect with take that clankers, but knowing that you're not going to be playing your objective deck, it's going to be tough to set up with those longer deployments that they bring. So yeah, that's kind of uh, everything for Gar. Um, I mean, they were top dog last season, so... For them to fall off a little bit because of the nerfs that did need to happen I think they're still in a good spot um, but yeah that's kind of where they are still the best gun line in the game uh, very tough to shoot off the board and delete activations with clones um, but yeah all right and last but certainly least because I hate them uh, is rebels uh, <laughs> So Rebels, um, I think this could be one of their best lists currently. It's the uh, veteran veteran spam with uh, snipers and then the airspeeders. So it's basically just the Hoth theme list, which is pretty cool. Um, the airspeeders have gotten much, much better now that they have searched crit. They're only 130 points. Jeez, they used to be 175 points. That's crazy. Um, they're only 130 now. And the fact that you can get 12 activations in this list is pretty crazy. You do have quite a bit of firepower with the veterans and the um, 
CM troopers as well as the Mark II's. Typically what you do is you play uh, Assault, give your uh, air speeders two orders and then something else whether it be a vet or a sniper or whatever, R2. Uh, oh that should be R2, sorry. Where is he? There he is, R2, okay. Um, and then you follow it up with the, um, what do they call it? What's that one? Uh, covering fire. Yeah, so you can get all your core out of your bag. So you kind of, it's kind of like the same thing as like an ISF. Like y your first two turns are kind of known, and uh, you try and snowball it from there. The air speeders are really good. Um, they can come in and just take out activations. You do have link targeting array. The threat range on these guys with a double move shoot is like 38 inches or something like that. So it's over range 6, which is crazy because that's half the board. So you could literally set them up at your table edge, you know, on the short side. Go all the way past half point and still hit something, pretty much. Which is pretty crazy. Um, this list is decent at bombing run because you do have two air speeders. You probably put the last one on like R2 or something because of blast off and he just beep boops to the end zone. Um, but that's probably the only risk factor is that you do have a third bomb that doesn't have a for sure way of getting there. Um, so yeah. Um, other rebel lists that are out there, I mean you could do like Lando type list um, because of the free standby that's pretty good um, Lando and Luke seems really good the problems that Rebel ha Rebels have is that they're very hero focused I mean obviously this one isn't but they're very hero focused and they rely on Pierce to do their damage and with the meta being droids who have so many wounds the Pierce just doesn't do enough and they don't have big enough dice pools to just get through all the bodies. So that's kind of the problem. If you do play Rebels, you probably have to bid and outbid um, the droids just because you can't play Bombing Run, really. And you don't want to play Intercept or like Sabotage. You're not going to be able to get over there and do enough damage. So I don't know. It's kind of tough. Um, I wish that the CIS list wasn't so dominant and um, couldn't bid as much. That's probably the biggest problem is that their objective deck is so favored and they can bid so easily right now. But we'll have to see how it comes out. I do think CIS will win it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if like the top 8 was 6 out of 8 uh, CIS lists and then maybe there's like uh, a gar in there and then maybe a rebel or something top four probably are going to be all cis and then it'll probably be like a mirror match in the finals i'm guessing i think a lot of people will be playing 13 activations just like last season we had rex star so we'll have to see but uh let me know what you guys think in the comments below and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I tried to keep it short, but there was a lot to cover. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.